This week's episode is sponsored by Chime. What's the first thing you do when you wake up, girls? Is it check your credit score? Didn't think so, because I know I sure don't. But guess who does? Chime does. That's exactly what they do. With their secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card, you'll start building credit with your own money. Chime reports your payments to credit bureaus to help you build credit over time. Their members see an increase of 30 points on average. How gorgeous. All of this with no annual fees, large security deposits, or credit checks to apply. So start your credit journey with Chime. Sign up only takes two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com slash unfazed. Again, that's Chime.com slash unfazed. C-H-I-M-E dot com slash unfazed. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank N.A. pursuant to a license from Visa USA Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply for the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa. Visa credit card. Regular on-time payment history can have a positive impact on your credit score. Impact to score may vary and some user scores may not improve. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply except at MoneyPass ATMs in a 7-Eleven or any AllPoint or Visa Plus Alliance ATMs. This week's episode is sponsored by Talkspace. What is Talkspace? Talkspace is online therapy, which I live, laugh, love. I am not a fan of receptionists, paperwork, and driving to an office, all of the hoopla that comes with setting up an appointment for a therapist. And guess what? You don't have to do that because talk space exists when it comes to therapy and psychiatry getting the help you need has never been so simple when you're able to access your provider from the comfort of your device it means mental health care can be on your time cute and gorgeous alleviating the wait times to get an appointment or the travel to the office really freeing up your time your schedule the rest of your life to breathe girls talk space is so convenient and accessible it helps me feel supported around the clock talk space lets you send messages to your dedicated therapist in the talk space platform which allows you to update them on any challenges or triumphs you're facing in real time so you don't have to wait for your next session with talk space you set goals with your therapist and they will hold you accountable take my word for it they will they'll be checking up how you doing they make sure you're really progressing okay therapy can help you shift your perspective that's exactly what it's done for me it's really helped me um, find better coping mechanisms find the, the tools to cope really in difficult times and they're just a guiding light so listen girls right now i've got a special deal for my girlies as a listener of Unfazed and Unbothered, you'll get $100 off your first month with Talkspace. To match with your licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com. Make sure you use my code Unfazed to get $100 off your first month and to show your support to the show. That's Unfazed at Talkspace.com. Hey, girlies. What the fuck is good? What's tea? What's juice? My name is Camo, and you're listening to another episode of Unfazed and Unbothered, the podcast where we rant, rave, and ramble about literally any and everything. I have really bad allergies, so I'm a little flimmy. So if I am sounding out of breath or, you know, struggling over here, that's why. Also, My cat's hair was in my mouth. That is just fucking great, gorgeous, sexy news to me. So um, <laughs> today I find out, fingers crossed, I find out if I got this place I applied for. I am so excited. Assuming that I get it, I'm going to fucking throw my pussy around in circles I'll probably cry realistically. Uh, I have been getting the runaround. Today will be day three of me getting the runaround. I had put in an application. I added a co-signer just because, you know, I don't have any hi- like rental history, no credit, and I don't have pay stubs per se. So I just wanted to make sure that I had the most my my best chance at getting this place so um, when I filled in the application online I added 
my co-signer. Well, when I got to the office, they were like, oh, um, so the co-signer will also have to pay a admin and application fee. And I was like, oh, period, which I would have had to pay because they're not living with me. So I was like, well, based off of all the documentation that I've given you, do you even think I'll need a co-signer? And he was like, honestly, no. So I was like, okay, go ahead and delete him out of the system. So I guess because I did the application myself online and he was manually trying to delete a co-signer, like froze my application from being able to process and being able to, you know, throw my background check out there. Or so I've, I've been told. Um, so I've been up in limbo for now three days and it's eating me alive. Today is supposed to be my move in date. Uh, I get the keys today if I get the place and, um, yeah, the uncertainty is eating me alive. I so badly want this place, but what is a little irritating, um, if you're listening, um, <laughs> They do have like a move-in special right now where like the admin and application fee would go towards your first prorated month. So like if you knew that I was like, you know, worried about paying an admin and application fee, but also knew that that would end up going towards my rent, why would you even let me kick them off? Like if you thought that maybe that would freeze up my app, I don't know, because that would have just went right towards my rent so it wouldn't have been any money lost really whatever just gonna check into the game divine timing they allegedly just put brand new appliances in my unit today <laughs> my unit <laughs> bitch my unit my my house my townhouse bitch <sighs> uh i hope i'm not speaking too soon i hope i'm not jumping the gun i mean Based off all the documentation I gave him, he was like, yeah, there's really no reason you should be denied. I don't have, like, a bad criminal record. I did have things on my record years back. I did get arrested. I've talked about that for weed and, you know, shoplifting many years ago. But I, I was a different woman back then, both of which have rolled off of my um, off of my record. The first one, I plead no low. So they took that shit off, slap on the wrist. And then the second time, the department store didn't provide the evidence, so the case was dropped. Which, by the way, they got their shit back. So I don't know even why they tried to continue to pursue that. Because I just... Anyways. um, Yeah. Still to this day, that department store hits me up. And they're like, you gotta pay $800 for damages. Damages, bitch. What damages? I gave you them fucking designer glasses back, bitch. Um, yeah, but you know what? That was the past. Like I said, that was, that was a different time. I was a different woman. I was poor and broke and I just wanted a taste of luxury. So, um, I did what I had to do to get there. Um, <laughs> hold on one second. It's hard to multitask and be a gorgeous queen, you know, and not spill my coffee everywhere. Cheers. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, I'm so excited though I'm going to immediately go to the complex as soon as I wrap this episode up so if it is a short episode that is why I'm I've literally been biting my fingers down to nubs not really but um I could if I didn't have gel polish on them. I, they would be gone. They would be completely and utterly gone. Any other life updates? Mm, not really. That's really like the main focus of my life. And I know that's like all I rambled about last week. Oh my God. What is this fucking feedback? Bitch. Electronics are so weird to me. Like, why is there, why does how can chords disrupt other chords you know what is the science behind that i don't understand um oh i do have other life updates i got my lips done again 
Thank you, Rose, at WIFH. Honestly, I love my girls at WIFH and Dunwoody. Um, I, I don't get paid to, pro to promote them, y'all. I, I, I genuinely love them, okay? I don't get paid to tell y'all that they are great. They are so great. So if you are an Atlanta girly, highly recommend. They have so many awards, too, for, like, being the best in town, this, the best, this, the best, that. And genuinely, I believe it because the care that they give me, like, I've gotten my lips filled before. I've gotten Botox and things like that and loved everyone that's ever done that to me as well. But I don't know, Miss Rose in particular, she is so meticulous. Like, the past few times I've gotten filler in the past, it looked great, no complaints, but... um. It was done, the process was done so quickly. Like, I, I I remember my lips taking, like, 10 minutes to, you know, actually inject. But Rose took, like, 25 minutes, and she was, like, dancing around and, like, running to one side, running to the other side of me, running. And she was, like, way up in my face, like, looking so closely, and she was just so meticulous about the placement. And, you know, I was very satisfied with that. She makes me feel so good. She makes me feel so confident in the fact that, I'm in the right place with the right person. So, Miss Rose, shout out to you. I love you so much. I love WIFH and Dunwoody. Tell them Camo sent you. They have laser. Um, I, I've been getting laser tattoo removal, laser hair removal. I've gotten um, micro needling. I've gotten uh, hydrofacials, all everything I've gotten there has been so great. So, anyways, I'm going to stop rambling about. W-I-F-H. Live, laugh, love you. But I'm obsessed with my lips right now, y'all. <laughs> I did get them done two days ago now, so this is not the final effect, unfortunately. I did do my first massage um, not too long ago, a few hours ago. Um, I wish they stayed like this. They'll go down a little bit, but this is like the perfect lip to me. Oof. I'm a had a burp. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, this is like the perfect amount of drama. It's not like too crazy, but it's not giving little lip Linda, you know? Um, so yeah. Lips, apartment. Oh, I don't know what that was. It just came out of my esophagus. Um that was kind of scary. <laughs> oh, all I can think about is moving. All I can think about is setting up my room. This townhouse has two bedrooms, and both bedrooms have walk-in closets. Two walk-in closets in each. This place was literally made for me. I didn't really want an apartment because I don't want somebody stomping above me, nor do I want to be stomping above anybody else and getting complaints you know so the townhouse or a house is just most ideal and I love townhouses because you're like in a community and there's you know you know it's just cute and gorgeous so I'm gonna keep you girls updated on that but that's all I can think about nothing crazy has really happened this week I've kind of been staying home ever since I was you know bound and, de and determined to move I've, I've just been staying home and not spending any money because I have no other choice I have to really buckle down on my responsibilities and my biggest problem is my spending so got to get that under control but anyways I'm gonna go on a break and when I come back I'll be back per this week's episode is sponsored by Chime. Girls, what is the first thing you do when you wake up? Is it check your credit score? Mm, I don't think so. I know I sure don't. But Chime, they do. That's exactly what they do. With their secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card, you can start to build credit with your own money. Chime reports your payments to credit bureaus to help you build credit over time. Their members see an increase of 30 points on average. All of this with no annual fees, large security deposits, or credit checks to apply. So start your credit journey with Chime. Sign up only takes two minutes and doesn't affect your credit 
score. Get started at chime.com slash unfazed. Again, that's chime.com slash unfazed. C H I M E dot com slash unfazed. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank in a pursuant to a license from Visa USA Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply for the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card. Regular on time payment history can have a positive impact on your credit score. Impact to score may vary and some user scores may not improve. Out of network ATM withdrawal fees may apply except at Money Pass ATMs in a 7 Eleven or any All Point or Visa Plus Alliance ATM. This week's episode is sponsored by Talkspace. I love Talkspace because online therapy has been so helpful and beneficial to me, my healing, and If it wasn't for online therapy, I wouldn't be in therapy because honestly, (laughs) going to an office, paperwork, receptionist, all of that, it stresses me out. So now thanks to Talkspace, I don't have to worry about any of that. Using Talkspace feels like having a mental health professional in your pocket. Talkspace offers both therapy and psychiatry. Being able to reach out to my provider anytime, anywhere really makes taking care of my mental health super easy. I'm more relaxed when I'm traveling, knowing that if I need to talk to somebody in the middle of my vacation, I will have a therapist on standby, okay? Working through things in therapy can be tough, but connecting with your Talkspace therapist isn't. I recommend Talkspace for therapy. You can sign up online and get a personalized match with the provider that's right for you, typically within 48 hours. You can text, video, or send voice messages to a licensed therapist. So it's incredibly convenient to have virtual sessions from the comfort of your home, on the go, wherever need be. As a listener of Unfazed and Unbothered, you'll get $100 off your first month with Talkspace. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com. Make sure to use code UNFAZED to get $100 off your first month and to show your support to the show. That's UNFAZED at Talkspace.com. All right, girlies, we're back. Okay, so let's talk some pop culture shall we um why is my fucking mic stand being a fucking bitch keep sliding down fucking dumb whore drake and 21 savage have y'all listened to their new album her loss literally iconic iconic i am a huge drake stan I love 21 as well. And I think they are just such a great duo. I think both of their energy together just meshes perfectly. Like Drake is the right amount of soft, but still hard. And then 21 is just fucking 21, you know. Um, Drake, you know, he, he did his collaborative album with Future back in the day. It was all right. It was all right. Um, nothing to write home about. Few few good tracks on there, but her loss, start to finish, the puns, the fucking uh bars, like there are just so many fucking lines that I'm like, damn, 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 or it's it, and it's so funny. There's just so many funny fucking lines in it as well. So I highly recommend that you check that out. Also, Joji dropped a new album as well. Um, I need to re-listen to that a few more times. There was several tracks on there that I really liked, but um. Nothing that I got obsessed with. Um, there was a few tracks that are in my like page, but Drake and 21's new album, Chef's Kiss, highly recommend. Nikita Dragon, though. <sighs> Y'all, that situation is so upsetting and crazy to me. The fact that she was thrown in a, in a in men's jail Florida is so disgusting. The fact that so many people down there have done their due diligence to keep these laws and acts in place and like all these. (sighs) It's disgusting. It's disgusting, honestly. Um, The fact that she is down. Well, she's out now, but I saw this random video pop up on my for you page of like these fans of hers they like apparently were there and like she'd 
been like dealing with them and like hanging out with them afterwards and i'm just like wondering to myself is she okay because the videos that i saw were a little alarming and she just seemed a little unhinged now i'm sure she's been traumatized by the events but like holy shit girl i am worried for her safety <laughs> um hope you're okay girl honestly I know a lot of people feel indifferent towards her. I actually love her. I admire her. I always have. She is definitely um, controversial, sure, but I just love the doll. She's she's gorgeous. She's sexy. She stunts on these fucking bitches, and I'm I'm obsessed, truly. But uh, watching all the footage of her in the cell and like talking to the judge, it really affected me and my homegirls like all funny business aside like it was so sad to see and her asking if she had to stay there in the in the men's cell uh gut-wrenching I don't care what people think or what people have to say about her this situation is so sad and I really hope that she is okay mentally right now but at the same time I will be eating the situation the fuck up so I'm sure she is living for all this press but at the same time like Ugh, I hate that she had to go through all that. But praying for you, girly, manifesting good positivity for you because we live, laugh, love you, queen, here on Unfazed and Unbothered. Mm. Anything else? Pop, culture, anything worth talking about? Ugh, the elections. Stacey Abrams lost. I'm so upset about that. <sighs> Such a bummer. But I don't want to talk about politics. You know what? I don't want to talk about politics because it just always ruffles some feathers. So go listen to her loss. Yeah. I just want to get high right now and listen to her loss. Yeah. But I can't do that because I'm out of weed. Miss M the, the, the Mary Fairy. Hasn't been very giving. I have not been buying weed because, like I said, I'm trying to save my, my coins. And also, bitch, what is this fucking feedback? Pissing me off, bitch. Fuck. So sorry. Um, yeah, I've not been buying weed because... I'm trying to save my, my coins, and I am trying to cut back on my substances, you know? I've even been considering stopping my Adderall because that shit makes me so irritable. So fucking irritable. And I know that's, like, a common thing, but, like, I'll be in the car, y'all. If there was a camera in my vehicle... Y'all would be disgusted because every fucking body who mildly inconveniences me, you fucking ugly bitch, get out of my fucking way. I literally turn into fucking Miss HR collection. It's scary. It is so scary. And then I hear my mom come out of me. God damn it. I'm like, oh, fuck. The spirit of dawn lives on. Truly, she does, though. Rest in peace, mama. Live, laugh, love you. Always and forever. I really, more and more every day, I feel like her spirit is taking over me because, like, right now I'm looking at myself and I'm like, oh, my God, that's my mother. I'm my mother. My mother's daughter. Mm. Um, I am going <laughs> to... I'm going to go on another break. And when I come back, I'm going to answer these Q&As. I did a Q&A on my Instagram story. I haven't done one of those in a while. So um, I saw some juicy questions. Um, so stay tuned for that. All right, Q&A time. I've got my questions here right off the rip. That stoner underscore Victoria. Do you get treated differently now that you've lost weight? I'm a plus size girly and curious. Yes, absolutely. There, 
is a, a distinct difference in life experience going from being plus size to being skinny I mean skinny or skinny ish you know I'm still on my skinny journey but there's a lot of behaviors and a lot of comments you'll hear from people that really just confirm the re- the sad reality of being plus size and being bigger um people have made lots of comments like now that you're no longer fat and these are people who also would be like oh you're not fat you got shape you got this boop, 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 boop. but now they feel comfortable to say that now i'm also very self aware so i know i was fat and I don't take offense to them saying that, but it puts things into perspective because back then when I was fat, I was always thinking to myself, do these people take my size into consideration? Do they think about my size? Is that even on their mind? And people obviously try to be nice and they don't want to hurt people's feelings. And so they're like, oh, you look good. Do this, that, beep, 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 boop, But When you hear these comments fast forward to getting smaller, you're like, oh, I wasn't crazy. These people were they were thinking these things. And also like. Men have just been flocking in from all angles. And. You know, when I was a bigger person, like I've always been cute and confidence is key. Like even when I was big, I had a level of confidence. Maybe shouldn't have had that much confidence. But um, no matter where you are, confidence is key. If you can fucking own who you are, there is nothing sexier about that. And I truly feel like I have done my best to embrace who I was in whatever period I'm in. Of course, I do feel better and I am much happier presently than I was back then. But even back then... I was, I didn't like myself that much, but I did try to maintain confidence. Uh, Don't know if that makes sense. It it might sound contradictive, but I didn't really love myself. I loved myself to my core, you know? I loved who I was as a whole, but I didn't like my vessel. But me as an entirety, I had confidence in who I was, the energy that I provided, my humor, um, the love that I gave people, me as an, 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 an me in my entirety, I was confident about, but um, I didn't like my exterior, so I did always try to, you know, look at it like this is who I am. Take me as I am. I obviously can't like lose a hundred pounds overnight, so um, there's no point in me sitting here and being like completely insecure and and hating myself. But uh, anyways, rambling Adderall is really kicking in. Uh. Men back then, they only wanted to fuck. And they would and people would say things like, you have such a pretty face. That was such a backhanded compliment to me because I'm like. You're probably thinking to yourself, I would be so hot if I lost weight. And. Now, guys want to take me on dates, guys are like, hey, can we go on a date? Can I take you out to get dinner? Can I take you here? Can I take you there? And frankly, I've not really given anybody my time. I am still kind of like healing from my last relationship. Uh, So I've like entertained a few people here and there. Sure. But I, I just don't really have dating on the brain. I've never really been somebody who felt like I had to have somebody I I like to date with purpose and if I don't feel like there's potential to grow into something bigger then I'm just not interested so I've not really went on any dates um not many at all actually but to answer your question (laughs) yes people do treat me differently um in comparison to being overweight so Let's see. Hail of Phi. Hail, hail, hail so Phi. LOL. When are you going to make more music? As soon as I get into my place, girls, I am in go mode. I am in fucking go mode. I am recording music 
every fucking day. When I lived in this apartment with my mother years ago, my car was broken down. I didn't have a job and I didn't have resources to really do anything. So I was just always at my house and going to the gym. And when I was at my house, I was always writing and recording music. Now I have all these things going on, all these endeavors, obligations. Also, I've like, I've, I've hated my living space. Um, so I've not, I've like tried to stay out of the house as much as possible. And now that I'm going to have to buckle down on my responsibilities and I'll have my own place to do whatever I want, whenever I want, however I want, I'm going to be working all the time. So do stay tuned. Music will be coming very soon. I promise you. Uh, Emily Holmstrom. Holmstrom. Hey, girl. What's it like being a triple Sag? I'm so jealous of that. Well, thank you for remembering. I am a, tri a triple Sag. Um, I am not somebody who's like so bent or, or like I'm not like so sold on astrology. I, 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 I feel like there's obviously truth in it. And I do see like I feel like I've seen enough patterns to trust or, or to feel like you know there, there's some level of truth to astrology and whatnot but I'm not somebody who's like oh you're this way because you're a Sag or you're oh this way because of that but the way I uh have what I've gathered is you know one is uh the the face that you present one is who you really are and then the other is how people um how people perceive you pretty much you know and so the fact that I'm sad 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 I'm like okay so I must be who people think I am and I must present also the way that I feel and I feel like I feel like that's the case I I pretty much wear my heart on my sleeve you know what I'm going through when I'm going through it I I, I have like I, I don't I, I just don't hold back, you know, and I don't see the point in putting on a, a, a show. Um, you kind of get me as I am in the moment. So I feel like people can always tell when I'm either uncomfortable or when I am unhappy or when something's going on and I really show those emotions. So, like, I guess I'm just authentic. You know, that's that's the, the, the triple Sag experience. But it, very intense. Lots of fire in my chart. So that is gorgeous news. <laughs> is it? I don't fucking know. Oh, she also asked, what is your favorite holiday? Um, Honestly, Christmas. I love Christmas. The lights, the music, everything. Okay, she asked several good questions. How has being online slash being a content creator affected your dating life? Okay, so that is actually a really good question, and I finally feel comfortable enough to speak about this. I have never posted anybody online. I did finally take a leap of faith a while back, and I posted somebody that I really was into. I really felt like I genuinely had like a, a love connection to. And long story short... They let the opinions of others and people at their job found my TikTok and pretty much harassed them with my content and the fact that they had been involved with me. And that really, honestly, I'm going to be real candid with you girls. I, I, I do, like I said, I wear my heart on my sleeve and I say a lot of things, but there are some things I hold back when it comes to like my show and posting on the internet. Like I don't really talk about my personal life much, but that situation i privated most of my videos because of that situation that is why i privated so many videos yeah now watching back at those videos i do get uncomfortable because i know how much i didn't like my exterior so i was going through hoops and hurdles to you know, give an experience because I, I couldn't just get on TikTok and be cutesy pootsy and 
throw my ass in a circle and get engagement. So I had to like be overly dramatic and say the most bonkers off the wall shit and make the weirdest faces. And so looking back, I'm like, this person was unhinged, but it was, it was a part of the act, you know, like I was entertaining. Okay. And I was making money. So in my opinion, like it would have been an opportunity for me to be like, oh yeah, my bitch made all this money talking shit on the internet being themselves. But, um, they took that as they they got insecure about it pretty much. And they let the opinions of other people interfere with our relationship. And I still have feelings about that situation. And it has caused a lot of mental anguish. Really and truly. <sighs> so, um, it has affected my dating life. Also, anytime somebody, you know, swipes right on me or we match or something or somebody messages me on like a dating app or whatever, it's just weird. It, it just, it's, it's weird because it, either they think I'm being a catfish and stealing somebody else's photos and they don't believe that my socials are me or they just immediately right off the ripper like, oh my God, I'm talking to a celebrity. Baby, Lady Gaga is a celebrity, okay? I just fucking talk shit on the internet. So that just kind of kills the vibe. I've had several people be like, what's your Instagram? And I don't like to give out my socials really and truly when I'm trying to like talk to somebody or if somebody's taking interest in me because I it just always gets in the way as soon as they see my social medias it's like there's ideas about me they think I'm this that they, they think I'm that like even the guy that I was talking about a minute ago when he met me he was like oh wow I had no idea that this is how you were you you are like a genuine real person offline like I figured that when I met you you would be like braggalicious and be a bit of a cunt and be self-absorbed and like I was just very grounded and very like interested in him and like wanted to listen and you know and so people see followers and they just automatically assume that you're gonna be a fucking raging bitch and that's just not who I am so a lot of times guys will take interest in me and they will be like what's your socials and I'm like I don't really want to give it out and they're like why I'm like it just kind of like makes things weird and then they just pressure me and I'm like okay here's my Instagram immediately they block me or they unfollow me or they uh, don't follow me and they'll just like stop talking to me or you know anyways so that that answers your question I hope miss lovely Matthew music 100 asks opinion on open relationships listen if it works for you shoot for the fucking stars but personally I couldn't do it. I do not like to share and I'm very old fashioned when it comes to dating. I want to be wooed and I want to have a man who is obsessed with me and me only. And if you can think about other pussy, other titties, other whatever out there, then you're not for me, in my opinion. That's just how I feel. Um, some people feel like open relationships work because we get bored but like I just feel like how I see a relationship two people if they really loved each other it wouldn't be all this work you know and, it, and there wouldn't be room to be bored like just being in someone's present that you presence that you really like and enjoy like I would find satisfaction out of literally just sitting in silence looking at each other. So for me personally, I don't understand how people do that because I just feel like that is a breeding ground for jealousy and a bunch of problems. And oftentimes it just doesn't work. So if it works for you, period, pop off, queen. But I could not ever do that. Okay. 
Virginia Grace Livingston, books that have inspired you, The Secret, The Secret and all of The Secret books. Those are like the only books I've really read, but I read The Secret back in like 2015, 2016 ish. And ever since then, it's really changed my mindset. Marissa Cannon, what does spirituality look like for you? Um, I am very much somebody who will go to the park and sit by the water by myself and play frequencies and look at the water and just express my gratitude to the world. And I feel like everything has a rhyme and a reason, you know, the the trees, the water, everything. And so when I look around and I am just taking it all in and, and admiring the world around me, I feel like wow, this is peace. This is, I feel in tune, you know, like putting my feet in the soil, taking my shoes off and just embracing everything around. It just makes me feel so elevated and so high frequency, if that makes sense. So I love spirituality I'm a spiritual mama what can I say I did start talking to this guy not too long ago and we just we ended before we started really more so because of distance and he um is all over the place with his job but I will say he was great he was cute he was very nice he was an ideal candidate but It's true when they say you got to find somebody you're evenly yoked with because he had very different opinions about like spirituality and he just thought it was all hoopla and hocus pocus. And I am a very spiritual person and I just cannot tolerate somebody telling me that my deceased mother is just dust in the fucking ground now. I, I, I like to think that we will reunite. And also, I've just had too many experiences to think otherwise I feel like people who are so convinced that there's nothing more like that is ignorant it really is because how can you expect me to believe that something came from nothing okay you can use all the science science is very important science is science does make sense science does have a rhyme and a reason and um It explains a lot, but there's certain things science cannot explain. Like, how did we start? Hmm? How did something come from nothing? There's obviously got to be something bigger than us. And I just can't fathom thinking to myself, like, there's no purpose to the human experience, to life, you know? So that was like a, a kind of like a deal breaker for me. Uh, let's see what other questions. Sophia Wilkerson, what was your worst job and why? I love you, queen. I love you too. Worst job was either the, I worked at a marathon gas station in Auburn. It was horrendous. The man who works there still works there and he smells like fucking chicken shit. And I would have to wear his jacket in the freezer to organize it and it stunk so goddamn bad and he called me the gangster faggot once upon a time uh we did get in a fight over money because i was like bitch run me my my motherfucking money it was a whole situation i'm not even gonna tell that story because i'm a little disappointed with the way i handled it but also i did what i had to do at at that time but he was also very nasty to me so yeah, but I was getting paid $7 an hour and he was holding up my money because his mother hired me to be under the table. And then he tried to like fight me on that and held up my money. And I was so dirt poor. Like the day that I came to go get my check, my car literally had zero miles of gas. And I didn't know how I was going to get home without that money that he was supposed to give me and then he was like you have to sign this fucking w-2 and it's going to take some time to get this money and so it just like was a whole fucking fiasco but that was horrendous and i was just doing so much work for so little and i was only utilized for like three hours to pretty much just clean the place up that was tragic 
And then after that, I worked, or not after that, but the next job that I hated was fucking Starbucks. I love Starbucks to consume, but to work there, oh, fuck no. The goddamn cunts that come up in there, you couldn't fucking pay me enough to do that shit again. And also, like, my manager, like, we're cool now. Like, I see her from time to time, and she brings up my fucking social medias and blah, 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 whatever. But back then, I fucking hated her. And she was just, like, a little condescending, in my opinion. And, like, I was doing customer support, which, if you know, you know. Basically, it's, like, the person who does the bitch work. Like, you're you're scrubbing the fucking dishes in the back. You're sweeping the floors. And when I was hired, it was, like, right before people went back to school. And so she was, like, hey, so until school starts, I'm going to keep you on customer support. And then as soon as everybody goes to school... I'm going to train you on bar. And I was like, okay, period, queen. So um, school started back up, and she never was training me. And I I kept harassing her about training me. Finally, she gave me, like, two days of training. And then for the next, like, two weeks, I was on fucking customer support. And I'm like, hey, I'm so tired of being on fucking customer support. And she's like, Camo, you are a rock star, okay? Every role in this facility is crucial and essential you play just as much of a big part in making this uh experience you know like try to just bullshit me pretty much and it was just very gaslighty in my opinion and I was like cut the shit I did not come here to scrub dishes and do the bitch work and she's like you have a really bad attitude camo because every role is essential okay you're doing your job they're doing their job i don't want to fucking scrub the goddamn floors and she kept fucking doing me on customer support and so i said bitch you just get no support how about that bitch and i left one day i did i left i do have a funny story though lol thinking of working there uh there was this guy fucking couldn't stand his ass he was so fucking cocky for no reason was not cute whatsoever and just like he was a fucking bitch so there was this barbershop across the street that one of my business partners, longtime friends, goes to or used to go to. And this particular person uh, that worked with me would also go there, come to find out. So one day I had went with my friend to his appointment, but I sat in the car while he went and got uh, lined up. and. I my my uh, coworker came in while my friend was getting his hair cut and he was like, "Oh shit, you work at Starbucks across the street?" And he was like, "Yeah, I work there. I work there." And so my friend was like, "Oh, so you must work with Camo." <laughs> he was like, "Yeah." So then my my friend like kind of set it up to where like he kind of set my coworker up to talk shit. And he goes, "Yeah, like what do you think of them? Like, they just dropped this, at the time I dropped this music video called For the Dick. If you remember, you remember. Um, and <laughs> my coworker was like, oh yeah, I fucking can't stand that bitch. They think they're gonna be famous. They're so lame. They're so this, they're so that. Beep, 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 talking all this fucking shit. And my friend is texting me everything like, Camo, come in here, come in here, come in here. So I fucking walk in and I'm like, hey, Louise, Louis, whatever his fucking name was. This motherfucker's face looked like he saw a ghost. And then I went and dabbed at my friend Junior. And like, you could just see the look of betrayal on his face. Like, you set me up. You set me up. And the way Humble was like, hey, Camo, how are you? Fucking faggot ass bitch. I can't stand a fake ass bitch. Ugh. Yeah, so that was my story time on that motherfucker. Also, one day, um, he fucking, I don't know how he kept his job after this, but I don't remember, like, the exact, all like, all the details because this was fucking years ago. But I had, like, just clocked in, and he was clocking in, like, 10 minutes after me, and there was, like, limited help. 
I uh, had not even really been trained on bar. So like all I could really do was work the register or do customer support. And there was only two other people. And so it was like a little messy in comparison to how it usually is ran. And he was not a manager. He like wanted to be a manager so bad, but he was not. And um, he came in and it was just like being very condescending and very um, belittling to us and was just like, ugh. This place is a mess, and y'all have been here and done nothing, and, like, in front of guests, right? And so I, I'm not going to let anybody, especially someone who is unequal to me in my line of work, like, I'm not going to let you talk down to me, especially not with an audience. So uh, <laughs> I had said something like, oh, you can keep them snarky-ass comments to yourself. And the customers were like, and I don't, I forgot what he said and what I said, like back and forth, but he kept challenging me and I'm petty. So I was just like with a smirk on my face, like, oh yeah, oh yeah, well this, well that, beep it up boop. He fucking took his apron on, he, apron off and uh, fucking threw it on the ground and walked out. I said, why don't you leave? Nobody wants you here. You're just fucking rude. And everybody in there was like, and then he threw his apron off and left, but then he still kept his job somehow. I don't fucking know. I didn't stay much longer after that. I couldn't stand the people I worked with. They were all fucking cringy and fucking weird. And my manager was a bitch and I just hated it. I didn't get to make the fucking drinks that I wanted to make. So, yeah. Um, Let's see. Kim underscore Zumpy. Zumpy. What is your favorite pop culture moment of all time? Definitely the 2009 VMAs, Lady Gaga's paparazzi performance. Iconic. Oof. Oh, my sister, Slunterella, asked, how often do you process? You know, I don't process anything, mama. And you should know that more than anybody. I go to things and I don't process them whatsoever. I just go on and move on. And maybe that's bad. Maybe that's toxic. But um, I just avoid everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Which, by the way, Miss Slunty is looking very slunty and cunty. Much love to her in her development. She is in her cocoon era as I am too. And she's really just metamorphosizing like Hillary Duff said, bitch. Love you, girl. Look at her. So cute and gorgeous. Also, she's going to be on the show as soon as I get my place set up. So stay tuned for that. Very excited for that. Okay. Miss Wyatt and Feller Katie. Hey, Queen. What do you look for in a partner? What is your type? Um, reciprocation, consistency, honesty. You know, you have to put your pride aside when you are trying to make a relationship work. Okay, you have to look at... the other person like you have to put all the bullshit aside like when there's problems I expect us to be able to come together and really be vulnerable with each other and candidly talk about why these things bother us or why you know like that's how progress is made and unfortunately I've not found somebody who's willing to match my energy but you know what it's okay divine timing When that comes, that comes. But to me, I don't really have like a type as long as you are funny. Well, I guess I do have a type. I do like Hispanic guys in particular, but I'm also open to whoever treats me right and vibes with me the most. But we got to have a similar taste in music or I got to at least enjoy the music you listen to. That's just a big part for me. We've got to be interested in each other's endeavors. Like you got to show interest in what I'm doing and you got to make an effort. And yeah, that's really what I look for. Funny, nice teeth. I love an uh, uncut king also for the record. So any of y'all listening, hit me up. (laughs) We just got to be spontaneous together. Silly. Go lucky. On that note, I'm going to wrap this 
this week's episode up. I appreciate y'all asking these questions. Thank you. And stay tuned till next week. I guess we'll find out if I got my place or not soon. Mm -hmm. Love y'all.